Here's a fun story. The Sydney Morning Herald newspaper in Australia once referred to me as an Olympic gold medalist for meetings. We calculated that I'd attended more than four and a half thousand meetings in my time as a business coach. What that means is I've got a good idea of how to make good meetings great and why so many meetings completely fall apart and they become an enormous pain. A lot of businesses blame meetings for the problems that come out of them, which is a bit like blaming a spoon for the reason you keep eating all that ice cream. If you've got the right approach for running your meetings, then they will rerun with momentum, with energy, and they will serve their purpose, which is bringing people together to communicate and decide before disseminating you back out into the business to actually execute. Here's a quick overview of this simple approach to running better meetings. Step one, you need to have an agenda. This might be set in advance. It might be something that you go around the group and discuss and agree on that agenda. You need to agree the whole agenda before you can actually start discussing the specific items that are on it. And this is one of the ways in which meetings go bad is they grab the very first agenda item that comes up and they try and resolve it and run out of time without actually getting through the rest of the items. Once you've got all of those agenda items agreed, you need to triage. You need to set the right expectations. How much time have we got? Uh, is there anybody in the room who maybe needs to take a phone call? One thing that I say is always very helpful is having one person who's responsible for taking notes. They will be documenting, at the very least, everything that is agreed and every action that is agreed. This is the step where you triage that agenda and it's entirely possible that you won't be able to cover everything that is on it. So you need to, like they taught me when I was studying to be a journalist, run an inverted pyramid model where you put the most important things at the top and that way if it gets lopped off, like a newspaper editor might lop off your story, halfway through you've still covered the most important points. I've seen meetings where the agenda and expectation steps can take a majority of the meeting. If that needs to happen, that's perfectly fine because you're better off doing that than having a discussion about the wrong elements. The bulk of the meeting, most meetings, runs through these three steps, a discussion, a solution and an agreement. To gain momentum, I'd recommend you prioritise two or three simple things at the start of the, uh, uh, of the triage process. They're the first ones you want to discuss, solve and get agreement on. Crossing those items off the agenda, getting some agreements in the bag, gives you and the team momentum to keep the meeting going. Make sure you allow enough time for those most important, the big meaty items. The ones that are going to require a lot more discussion and maybe a bit more of a controversial solution. It's also okay that your agreement in the meeting is an agreement to disagree or an agreement for a smaller subsection of that group to go away and come up with a proposed solution for the next meeting. You don't need to use everybody's time to come up with solutions that maybe don't require everybody's input. This process will cycle for as much time and agenda items as you have. Over time, as a meeting facilitator or chair, you'll get better at moving the energy through that process faster, making sure that everybody still feels heard, that all of the important points are raised, but that you don't get horribly bogged down in the discussion or distracted by the million squirrels that can show up. The last item in any meeting is taking the time to confirm the agreements that you've made and the actions that have been agreed. This is why having somebody document this is the most efficient process because at the very end, he or she can run through all of those. Make sure you allow enough time at the end of the meeting to have that conversation because there's no point making a whole heap of agreements that don't actually get communicated and don't get taken into the wider business. It's an interesting fact in most corporations that individuals have a very, very strict budget on how much money they can spend but they can seemingly call a meeting with thousands and thousands of dollars of hourly resource sitting around having a gas bag. Make your meetings as efficient as possible and you will ensure that you get a return on investment for the time of each of those individuals sitting in a meeting.